Hey everybody, it's Ned here. I'm going to show you how to have a USB drive with PHP and MySQL for a portable web server. The first thing you'll need is a USB drive. I would recommend it be 2 gigabytes in size um, and also have a read and write speed that's pretty decent. So outside of that we're also going to need to go get PHP and MySQL and for this tutorial's sake I'm going to grab WordPress and use that as a proof of concept. And we're going to be using this on a Windows 7 machine. Alright, um, so with that we're going to be using PHP 5.4 specifically, which just got released recently. And that actually has a built-in web server, so we don't need to grab Apache. We can just use the built-in web server and take advantage of that. First thing we'll do is go ahead and download it and we'll have to go out to Windows binaries and grab that and just grab the zip folder and download that to a location where you can find it. Um, so while we're here let's take a look at the actual web server and how it's used. Uh, you're pretty much executing the php.exe and passing in a S parameter, capital S, and specifying the location and also the port that you would access it from your browser. Um, there's a second parameter that we're going to take advantage of which is this dash T which sets the document root so we get to control where it's looking for the index.php or whatever file you're looking for. Um, so with that we'll also go out and grab MySQL and we'll go ahead find the community edition And I would grab the zip archive for whichever uh, system you have, either 64-bit or 32-bit. This way, it's not installed into your computer's program features, and it's all sitting on the USB drive. And then, also WordPress is available here at webpress.org. So once you have those files, you'll be able to go into the USB drive, which I've already download the files for time's sake and I created a bin folder on it that contains MySQL and PHP I'm not really going to do anything configuration wise with MySQL but PHP we're going to need to make some alterations so the first thing we'll do is create the PHP any file which they provide a development and production one but we're just going to copy the development one and go ahead and rename it to php.ini. And if I can type right. So we'll go ahead and edit this. And the first spot we're going to look for is the extension folder to make sure that is enabled and it's looking in the appropriate place. Uh, another thing I'm going to look for is the time zone and I'm going to set that and while I'm in here we'll set the extensions I'm going to go ahead and enable both the MySQL and the MySQL Any. And I'm pretty sure that's all we'll need to do for now. Go ahead and save that. And another few things that I'm going to do in order to save some time is create batch files off the USB drive to start the web server and database server so that you can get developing pretty quickly. Alright, so with that we'll go ahead and create a new file and we're going to use the call command for Windows and we're going to not specify a drive so that when it is executed it looks at the current drive that the file that executed it is coming from. So we'll use bin mysql bin 
and to start the web server we're going to use mysql d.exe so you'll save that to the root and we'll call that start mysql db dot that and we're also going to need one to close it so we'll do mysql bin and then for this you use the mysql admin dot exe you pass in the user of root and then specify the shutdown command and we'll save this as stop mysql db uh, we're also going to need to access the database so uh, what I'm going to do is create a executable that will launch the client um, if you're more comfortable with using PHP my admin uh, you can go ahead and do that So with this, you specify the username and then P, which this will prompt for the password. So start and then we're going to do one more to actually start the PHP web server. So we'll go bin PHP php.exe specify the capital S then I'm going to use 0000, 0, 0, 0 for local host and specify a port of 8080 and then my document root with the T is going to be projects slash wordpress and save that as start web server So if we come back to our pen drive, um, we can see that the project folder is here with WordPress in it, and there's no configurations set up for it yet. So when you go ahead and start this, I'd recommend starting the database first. And that window will stay open, and likewise when you start the web server, that window will remain open. To stop this, you'll use Control C, and then it'll ask you to confirm it, and say yes, and then to kill this, you can use our stop bat file. Uh, so while we're here, I'll go ahead and connect to the database. Show databases. As you can see, we don't have a WordPress database yet, so we'll go ahead and create it. And now we'll switch over to our browser and we'll go to localhost 8080. Go ahead and create the configuration file. WordPress is fine, that's what we named the database. Our username will be root and we currently don't have a password set on it. And we'll leave that stuff alone. Go ahead and submit run the install and then you will be prompted for your admin credentials and title of your site I'm just going to call it WordPress admin admin just put in your email address we don't need the privacy setting Go ahead and hit install. Okay, so uh, we are seeing pretty much nothing right now. Uh, the reason for this actually relates to my USB drive being slow and the computer being slow. So in order to help that along, we are going to go back into our PHP Any 
and search for execution time. So mine is default 30. I'm going to go ahead and bump that up to 240. You're going to save that, find your PHP web server, go ahead and kill that. Go back and launch it again from your bat file. And I am going to go ahead and clear out the database. And then recreate that. Come back over to the browser, hit localhost again. The configuration file should be there. So it should just prompt you for your admin credentials and site title. Go ahead and run the install again. So this time you see it was successful, so we'll go ahead and log in. It might take a little bit depending on the speed of your computer and USB drive. But as you can see, it does work. So one thing I was planning on doing uh, for my own personal gain was to use a NoSQL database. And at the time I was planning on using MongoDB, but that currently does not have a PHP 5.4 driver yet. I'm sure that will change relatively soon. Um, but you can set up whatever you want on here, CodeIgniter, Cake, Zend, Fuel, whatever framework you're comfortable with and develop away. So another thing to keep in mind is to not use PHP for a production web server. Uh, it even notes itself that it's not meant for that. This is purely for development purposes. Take a look at the WordPress website from the user point of view. And you can see it's pretty responsive. Even for a slow USB drive. So with that, I uh, recommend if you have any questions to ask them below. Otherwise, uh, happy coding.